Hello, my name is Russ Burleson, and we'll, today we'll be going over class six of Crave the Wave. This one's going to focus on some sample problems and solutions. Again, my email is provided below if you have any questions or comments. So today we're just going to go over some generic wave problems, some Doppler problems, some spectroscopy problems, and we'll finish with some color wheel problems and some refraction problems. So let's start off. All the questions pertain to the diagram on the right. Is it a longitudinal or a transverse wave? What is A in the diagram? What is Y in the diagram? What is C in the diagram? What is D in the diagram? Or excuse me, what type of units are D? So let's look at it. It is a transverse wave because the movement from equilibrium is orthogonal to the uh, to the uh, the wave propagation. A is the crest, Y is the trough, C is the amplitude, and D is the wavelength. Okay. And the symbol normally used for D is lambda, and the units will be length. So now let's do some other ones. What's the length of time for a full cycle to complete? What do you call a wave that moves in one direction? What do you call a wave formed by two waves going in opposite directions? What is the formula for finding the phase velocity of this wave when wavelength and frequency are known? What is the formula for finding the frequency when phase velocity and wavelength are known? What's the formula for finding the wavelength when the phase velocity and frequency are known? The period uh, for a full, the period of time for a full cycle to complete is, is it called a period. It's in seconds. And a wave that moves in one direction is a traveling wave. And one that's formed by two waves or even more waves uh, going in opposite directions is a standing wave. The formula for the phase velocity is, is velocity is equal to wavelength times frequency. Or frequency is equal to uh, velocity divided by wavelength or wavelength is equal to velocity divided by frequency. So now let's talk about some of the Doppler effect examples, okay? A police siren has a two kilohertz frequency. What frequency is observed by a stationary pedestrian in normal atmospheric conditions? Assume the speed of sound is 343 meters per second, four significant digits. And there's three different um, scenarios I want you to think about. Okay, I want you to think about if the police car is parked and not moving. If the police car is driving 40 meters per second towards the observer and the police car is driving 40 meters per second away from the observer. Question two is if a 150 hertz train horn is sounded near a railroad crossing and a person is waiting stationary, in other words, they're not moving, at the crossing because they can't see, it's foggy and at night, and the frequency heard by the person is 165 hertz with the same 343 uh, meters per second speed of sound. Is the train coming closer or moving away? And what speed is the train going in meters per second? So let's look at this. Um, so you'll notice if it's parked and not moving, there is no change. There is no change in, in the uh, frequency. So it is still two kilohertz. Okay. Now, if it's driving towards the observer, first thing I think, I expect the frequency to go up. Okay. So using that equation, I come out with the new frequency is uh, 2.264 kilohertz or 2,264 hertz. If the police car is driving 40 meters per second away from the observer, I expect the frequency to go down and it goes down to 1,791 hertz or 1 1.791 kilohertz. So then for the train horn one, let's look at that one. So the train is coming closer or moving away, okay? Well, since the train's coming closer because the frequency has increased, okay? And what's the speed of the train? 
Now, again, remember I told you, you have to solve for all these different ways, uh, depending on whether the observer's coming closer or the, or the, uh, or the uh, source is coming closer. And we come out with that it's moving at approximately 31.2 meters per second. So it's actually going quite fast. Now let's talk about three other ones, okay? A spacecraft is going away from the Earth at 0 0.95 times the speed of light, sending a one gigahertz signal to a stationary receiver. Assume three times 10 to the eighth meters per second is the speed of light. What type of color shift is observed and what is the observed frequency in gigahertz? Now a police car is now going 45 meters per second has a siren that has a two kilohertz frequency. What frequency is observed by a car in, in front of the police going 33 meters per second in the same direction in normal atmospheric conditions? And again, for this one, we're gonna assume that the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. So for number three, it's gonna be redshift. Why? Because it's going away. So the, the frequency is gonna be decreased because it's going away. It's going away really fast too. So we're expecting a pretty significant redshift, okay? And so what is the observed frequency in gigahertz? Okay, remember we expect it to go down and luckily we have stationary receivers. So it's a little bit simpler of a problem. And we come up with 0 0.513 gigahertz or 513 megahertz. For the police car example, okay, so we, since the police car is catching up on the, uh, on, the, on the poor person that's driving in front of the police car, we expect the observed frequency to be higher, okay? But we've actually got sort of two things playing against each other. In one case, the police car going forward at 45 meters per second means the frequency is gonna be higher, but the observer driving away is gonna actually decrease the frequency, okay? So you will notice that this one, we're actually subtracting from both the top and the bottom, and we come out with 2.034 kilohertz or 2,034 hertz. So we see an increase, but not as much as we would have expected had the, uh, had the uh, car in front been stationary. So let's talk about emission spectroscopy. For the example at the bottom, what is the element under test? So what we do here is we try to match them up. Now, if I look at it, it's not hydrogen, because those don't match up. It's not helium, because, well, those don't match up. It's definitely not neon. I can do that just by doing these two and these two. They don't match up. It's not sodium. So the answer is it's mercury because all the lines match up. Now you'll notice that when you see the intensity, the intensity, while there's still blips at those locations, they're not always going to be at the same level. In fact, they rarely are. And so so the important part is making sure all the lines match up. All right, so now we have a uh, light color. So this is gonna be a, 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 a light color type of issue where we have red, green, and blue. And I'm going to be shooting red, green, and blue onto the paper. And so if I have white light on green paper, what happens? The red and the blue will be absorbed. The green's gonna be a, reflected, so it's gonna appear green, okay? White light, red paper, the green and the blue are absorbed. The red is reflected, so it's gonna appear red. You'll notice with white light, R, G, and B are all three uh, present. For white light, blue paper, the R and G are absorbed, the B is reflected, and it appears blue. But now let's just do yellow light, blue paper. Okay, so here's the deal. The red and the green, okay? So yellow light is caused by RNG being sent, okay? 
But since it's blue paper, the only thing that's going to be reflected is blue, and there is no blue, so it's going to appear black. Magenta light, blue paper. The R is going to be absorbed. The B is going to be reflected. Okay, that, that makes sense. And there's no G. There is no G. So therefore, it's going to appear blue. Any color with white paper is going to appear all colors will be reflected, so it's going to appear as the color of light. Any color with black paper, all colors will be absorbed, and it will appear as black. Okay, so now let's talk about color mixing examples, how to mix a particular color. So if I wanted to mix white, how do I mix that? I add nothing. And that's, that's because all your additive colors usually start with a base of white. You'll notice that if you ever go to the paint now. I want to make black. I'll add magenta, cyan, and yellow in equal amounts. Okay? And that makes sense from the color wheel. If I want to have red, I'll add magenta and yellow in equal amounts. If I want to have blue, I'll add magenta and cyan in equal amounts. If I want to have green, I'll add cyan and yellow in equal amounts. And if I want to have magenta, I just add magenta. Now let's do the final set of problems, which are on Snell's law, okay? So if you look at this particular example, I have an incident ray coming in at the incident angle is theta sub i, or theta sub one, and I have a reflective ray. It's also gonna be at theta sub one. Uh, but I, I list it here in the table as theta reflected because I want you to practice thinking always to write that down. And then we have a, re, a refracted ray with theta sub two, okay? And keep in mind, this, this drawing is not necessarily to scale because sometimes we're going from faster to slower medium and sometimes we're going from slower to faster medium. So let's see how this turns out. Uh, if I go from faster to slower medium, the angle, reduces so it looks very much like this picture. It drops down to 19.5 degrees for the refracted, but notice that the 30 degrees is my reflected still. Now, if I swap those around and I'm going from slower to faster, you'll notice that now it's going further away to the normal, okay? And it is now at 61 degrees. Okay, um, and so, and then what you'll notice is, is that that's also the same as the reflected. And the same thing occurs when I do um, 1.33 at 50 degrees. Well, that's beyond the, um, that is beyond the, uh, um, the critical angle. So therefore we have total internal reflection. And so now what ends up happening is the only thing that we really have is theta one and, and theta reflected. And then if I have one and one, there is no interface. So there's no reflection or refraction. It just goes through like it's going through a single media. The critical angle for air water or one to 1.33 interface is 48.7 degrees. And the speed of light and diamond with n equals 2.42 is equal to three times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by 2.42 is equal to 1.24 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Those were just some of the sample problems that you can expect to see. And I hope that this has been helpful. Thank you.